the challenges are kind of the same that they've been actually for, for acromegaly. So the biggest thing is it's kind of a, a disease onset of around middle age, right? The median time of diagnosis is around, you know, 45 years of age, roughly. So the challenge is, is it depends on how long it takes for a patient to really start to identify, you know, signs and symptoms of acromegaly. And that would really just depend on the, the you know, the, the pituitary adenoma, how large it is, you know, you know, what, you know, in terms of how much it's secreting growth hormone, for example, will determine how significant those patients' comorbidities and complications are. And that may drive the patient to seek help or diagnosis earlier. Um, you know, things like, you know, headaches, difficulty sleeping, sweating, carpal tunnel, um, you know, more long-term complications such as, you know, morphologic changes of the body, you know, bigger hands, bigger feet, changes in their face and physical appearance, that may get a patient interested in going to see their doctor to try to understand why their shoe size is changing or their ring size is changing. Um, the challenge is, is um, probably similar to what you are, are used to hearing is that it's, it's still a rare disease. So the issue is, is that a lot of physicians may only have experience with just one or none of ever diagnosing and managing an acromegaly patient. And so sometimes patients can get passed along, you know, um, to different medical providers before they end up maybe with, you know, an endocrinologist experienced in pituitary care who then identifies, oh, there's a pituitary adenoma as the cause of your symptoms and physical changes. So I think the literature suggests that we are seeing some improvement on the time. So the, you know, the time to diagnosis, historically it was, there was some earlier literature quoting about a 10 year delay in, in disease identification and diagnosis. And some of the more recent data here is more suggestive of about five years. So I think we, we are getting better and more cognizant of it, but I think the biggest, the biggest thing and where AMRIT has been focused has been on education, education to both the patient. We think it's very important that, you know, patients are activated to, to be able to um, speak to their physicians and be educated on, on what to look for, but then also on the physician side and not just in academic centers where, you know, the pituitary centers where they, where they really know acromegaly, but also within the community endocrinology offices where, there may not be as many acromegaly patients. And so when one comes in, what's, what are the important things to look for? And then what, and how has that been managed? So I think education is probably the biggest piece, you know, in the offices, but I also think working with larger endocrinology organizations such as ACE and Endo are really important to drive awareness more broadly in the endocrinology community.